Hi, I'm Nick from FTC Team 15772, the Brady Goats. In this video, I'm going to talk about prototyping and some different types of materials that we have used in the past to prototype. Okay, so what is prototyping? Prototyping is one of the steps in the engineering design process that many teams use to design a part or an assembly. A prototype is also an early model that may lead to a more refined assembly, depending on if the prototype is considered a success or a failure. Prototyping is also a method used to test potential designs and to do so quickly and cheaply. Lastly, prototyping can help your team find potential flaws with the design. So why do teams prototype? As I stated on the previous slide, prototyping is often cheaper than making a refined design since you can use materials such as cardboard, Legos, and other materials that I'll talk about. Pro prototyping also allows you to test your designs quickly, allowing for fast iteration. Prototyping can also allow your team to uh, consider if a design should or should not be pursued. Lastly, prototyping can help you explain a design to other team members. This LEGO prototype wasn't used to test if, it, if the design would work or not, but rather allowed us to, to explain the design to the rest of the team. Our team has prototyped a lot of mechanisms over the past few seasons. Last year, we built this intake to bring in the stones into our robot, and we built it using Rev and Andy Mark parts that we had available. We also built this ramp and box out of poster board material. This prototype proved to our team that a design like this could work and was the design that our robot ultimately had. Our team also built a stone placement mechanism last year that grabbed one of the nubs and we made it out of rev parts. Lastly, we built this ball intake a few weeks ago using wood and PVC pipes along with a few 3D printed parts. The first and most simple prototyping material are Lego Technics. Legos are nice since, our, since your team might already have some. You don't need any tools to use them and they can be useful to explain designs. This Lego prototype was mainly used to show a delivery concept from last season. On the other hand, Legos aren't very good for testing designs since they aren't very customizable and, and your designs can break easily. The second prototyping material that our team has used in the past is cardboard. Like Legos, your team may already have cardboard available and you only need simple tools like an X-Acto knife and a hot glue gun. Cardboard is also very cheap if you don't have any. However, cardboard isn't, very dur isn't as durable as some of the other options and bends much easier. It's also difficult to use bearings and screws with cardboard. This was a prototype that we made a few weeks ago and it is a ball storage design that we made with cardboard and hot glue. The third prototyping material that our team has used a few, few times is wood. Wood is a very useful prototype since your team might already have some wood pieces and is fairly durable and also cheap if you don't have any. With wood, however, you either need a bandsaw or a chop saw to cut it and thinner pieces of wood are usually flimsy. This was a prototype that our team built over the summer that uses wood and was designed to intake balls and bring them into the ball storage box. Another prototyping material that our team used a lot last year are PVC sheets. PVC sheets can be glued together easily and can also be drilled into. It is also very durable and rigid and is also fairly cheap. You can buy PVC sheets at Home Depot, and there's a link in the description of this video. Your team will need a bandsaw or a chop saw in order to cut PVC sheets, and it is not as common as some of the other prototyping materials. Our team used PVC sheets for the side drive base plates last year, and also used it for this ball sh shooter. The final prototyping material that our team has used are 3D printed parts. Our team used 3D printed parts last year very often and made this part to hold our tape measure and to park in the build site. 3D printed parts are fairly durable and you can make pretty much any small part that you need. 
You can also make pretty complex parts, such as this part. 3D printed parts are the only prototyping option that I've talked about that requires you to use CAD. And if you're making a custom part, it may take longer to make than other options. This slide is a review of what I've talked about so far. The first point is that prototyping is a very important step of the engineering design process and is used by most top tier teams. Prototyping can also help your team determine if a design should or should not be pursued depending on the results of the, the prototype. Lastly, there are many prototyping materials and this slideshow only covered a few possible options. Each material has its own advantages and disadvantages that should be considered before using. I hope you have enjoyed learning about prototyping. To find out more about our team, please visit the links in the video description. Thank you for watching.